Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our, you know, I've lost count at this point. Are we at 15 or 16 monthly virtual town hall meetings? I that number. I want to say we're at like number 14 or so. 14, yeah. Time flies just when you're having fun. Anyway, welcome everyone tonight. Last month, we did do a rerun of our virtual town hall on how to enroll in a payment plan. But this month, we wanted to take a little bit of extra time to put a nice presentation together for you. And tonight, we are going to be talking about the history of the Philadelphia Parking Authority. I'd also like to take this time to let all of our attendees know that everyone is currently on mute, but that does not mean we do not want to hear from you. You will notice that there is a question feature within the web application for these virtual town hall meetings. And should you have any questions throughout this presentation, you can feel free to put them in there and we'll do our very, very, very best to address those throughout the presentation. However, if we're not able to address it during this presentation, we will be sure to follow up with you. If you put a question in there, we will have your contact information and we would be sure to follow up with you. Would also like to take this time to encourage all of our attendees to fill out the brief survey immediately following this presentation. It really helps us gauge what people want to know about and it actually helps us tailor these monthly virtual town hall meetings. As we conduct these monthly virtual town hall meetings, we have the utmost support of our executive team, including our deputy executive director, Clarina Tolson, our senior director of public engagement, Sue Cornell. My name is Bill Wasser, and I'm here with my favorite, 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 most favorite colleague of all time. Hello, everyone, and good evening. My name is Janelle King. Nice to meet everybody or see everyone again if you're joining us for another round. <laughs> we are both communications coordinators with the Philadelphia Parking Authority's Department of Public Engagement. And, you know, Janelle, when you think about the history of the PPA, you may not think about it too deeply, but there is actually quite a bit of things to cover in order to understand the history of the Philadelphia Parking Authority. Correct. Like it's not all that we do is issue tickets, like we said before. So tonight we're going to go over the PPA mission, um, Philadelphia's transportation evolution, how PPA was established, where we came from, how we got our name, <laughs> PPA present day, and we're going to do a little mission recap of all the information that we went over tonight. So without further ado, we figured we start since we're virtual with the video. We want to give you guys a little idea, and you know, an idea of our mission or well, of our mission and what we do here at the Parking Authority. So if you just give us one second, we'll get the video right on. The Philadelphia Parking Authority has a variety of responsibilities that guides our everyday functions. We administer Philadelphia's red light camera program to deter red light running at the city's most dangerous intersections. We offer convenient and modestly priced parking options through seven center city garages, three of which were just rated as premier by the International Parking Institute. Through operating and maintaining over 30 neighborhood lots, we also provide convenient parking options to Philadelphia's neighborhoods. We also provide state-of-the-art parking options at Philadelphia International Airport. In an effort to keep the traveling public safe, we also regulate Philadelphia's taxi and limousine services, as well as transportation network companies such as Uber and Lyft. And of course, we enforce Philadelphia's parking regulations to ensure a safe and continuous traffic flow for Philadelphia's residents and visitors. It is through these efforts that over $900 million in revenue has been dispersed to various government agencies 
in the past ten years. Reaching these goals would not have been possible without the hard work from our very dedicated staff. We thank you for being here and we look forward to our continued dialogue and partnership moving forward. Okay, and I think we're back. Janelle, can you confirm that you see the slideshow and everything for me? I know we've had a little bit of hiccups in transitioning from video to back to the slideshow. So I just want to make sure we're all good right now. Are we good? Yeah, we're good. We're seeing the our mission um, slide. Great, great. And I just want to say that the ending part of that video when the, the, that was the year that the Eagles were in the in the Super Bowl, and I, I was actually the person behind the camera filming that. I just remember it being like a really, really exciting time in Philadelphia. And with uh, the recent draft that the Eagles have, hopefully we'll be seeing uh, more of that this year. But anyway, moving on. At, folks, as you saw in the video, the overall goal and mission of the Philadelphia Parking Authority is to improve the quality of life for Philadelphia's residents and visitors and that is in part by making sure that there is sound regulation of philadelphia's parking that is what we try to do we keep philadelphia moving but in order to understand the overall mission of the philadelphia parking authority we first need to understand the evolution of the let's call it the transportation ecosystem of philadelphia uh, as an example, if you look at this picture back in <clears throat> Philadelphia in 1907 at 12th and Market Street, you see the various forms of transportation that were available at the time. These were the ways in which people conducted commerce in the city at the time. You see uh, people walking, you see individuals on horseback, you see trolleys, you even see horse-drawn carriages. But this is the year 1907. If you if you fast forward only four years at the same intersection, you still see people walking. Yes, you still see people on horseback. You still see horse-drawn carriages. You might see a uh, I don't see any trolleys in there. But the point is, with this picture, you start to see vehicles, gas-powered vehicles, for the first time in Philadelphia. Now, if you fast forward from here, you know, 14 more years at 15th and Market Street, the entire streetscape is completely dominated by gas powered vehicles. That includes cars, trucks. I think there's even buses in there. You still see trolleys on there. So you can see that the way in which Philadelphians got around was quickly, quickly evolving and if you fast forward 30 more years you see more modern automobiles on the street but in particular if you look at the curb space on the side it is just completely completely and entirely dominated by gas-powered automobiles now realizing that there was a need to regulate this this vast change in the way in which people got around and not only this what gas powered vehicles did at the time was created a a potential problem that was unthought of at the time and that was congestion so realizing that their parking uh, parking meters were eventually introduced in the 40s but before we um, get into parking meters a little bit uh, want to see if we can test our audience's knowledge here a little bit so we're going to pose a question for you guys here and that question is let me pull it up here real quick we're going to put a trivia question up on the screen here for about maybe 10 15 seconds let everybody have a chance to answer and that question is in what city was the first parking meter introduced? We have New York, Los Angeles, Oklahoma City, or Philadelphia. So we'll keep that up on the screen for a little bit. And if you do get the answer correctly, uh, if you do provide the correct answer, 
we may or may not send you a little uh, little PPA care package. So we'll leave it up there for maybe about five, 10 more seconds. Let everyone have a chance to answer. And we're gonna stop it right here. Now it looks like, you know what, Janelle, I, I think uh, quite a few people are gonna learn something here tonight. The first parking meter was introduced in Oklahoma City in the year 1935. And at the time it was called the Parko meter. And Janelle, no, no one no one got it right. No one got it right. Well, that's fine. Well, you know, that's why we have these monthly virtual town hall meetings to inform, educate, and assist. But uh, everyone had answered uh, Philadelphia. I, I know we're we're the first in quite a lot of things, but uh, you know, parking meters were were not one of them. It, they, it was first introduced in Oklahoma City in 1935. But in regards to Philadelphia. Let me just go back one more slide. As you can see, the entire curb space is completely dominated by cars by the year 1955. In the early 40s, Philadelphia City Council did pass an ordinance instituting a pilot program for parking meters. So in the early 40s, that's when parking meters first started cropping up in Philadelphia. And as you can see on the screen there, they were initially introduced on Walnut Street Chestnut Street and Arch Street from 11th to 18th and Market Street from 7th to 18th Streets and 11th through 18th Streets from Walnut to Arch. And this was actually the uh, same time we established a 20-foot section of each block per truck loading zone. So that was that that was also the inception point for loading zones at that time too. So if we look at what we've covered here so far from 1907 up to uh, 1955, you can see the quick evolution in which people got around in Philadelphia, and this got the attention of the state legislature. Now, what the state legislature did in 1947 is it passed the Parking Authority Law, which is Act 53 of June 5th, 1947. Now, what this piece of legislation actually did is it permitted all municipalities within Pennsylvania to create their own officially established parking authorities. So that law was passed in 1947. And then following that, city council then passed that, let me actually go back for a second. They call this enabling legislation, which permits municipalities to govern in a way they seem fit. So if you, uh, fast forward to 1950, City Council then officially passed an ordinance on January, January 11th, 1950, officially establishing the Philadelphia Parking Authority. Now, we like to think of January 11th as the PPA's birthday, so to speak, because that's when the ordinance was passed. And when that ordinance was initially passed, the only responsibilities that the Philadelphia Parking Authority had at the time was to plan, design, locate, acquire, hold, and construct land and facilities devoted to off-street parking, which is more commonly referred to as garage parking. After the Philadelphia Parking Authority was officially established through that ordinance, Within that ordinance, it said that the PPA would be governed by a five member board appointed by the mayor to five year terms. And on the screen right there, you see a list of the first official PPA board. You have a chairman, Francis J. Chesterman, vice chair, Robert Porter, assistant secretary, George Maxim, or Maxman, apologies, uh, Secretary and Assistant Treasurer James H. McHale and Treasurer Robert C. White. After the Parking Authority of board, uh, board was officially established, they, they realized that before hitting the ground running, there, there was much needed feedback needed from key stakeholders in the surrounding community. So they officially established 
an advisory committee upon the board being created. And if you look at the list there, I'm not going to read off the entire list. You, you notice that members of the board had a uh, had some sort of say or or you know like some sort of say or interest in the transportation ecosystem within Philadelphia at the time but most notably this is kind of cool you can see that the vice president of the PTC was a member of that advisory committee and if you're a transportation history buff in Philadelphia, the PTC is actually the precursor to SEPTA. So upon the board being established and engaging with the necessary stakeholders at the time, the PPA then went about to went about fulfilling its mission at the time, which was to provide convenient and modestly priced off-street parking. This started in December 1953 at, 8, at 1845 Walnut Street, where we opened the first mixed-use development, uh, mixed use development uh, parking garage. At the time, it was very, very uncommon, if not unheard of, for a parking garage to be melded into retail space. You can see the picture there in the bottom left. That was the... Uh, uh, nowadays we have ribbon cutting ceremonies, but it looks like back then they had a, uh, a chain. blowtorch chain cutting ceremonies. The picture there is our first chairman uh, <laughs> cutting the chain to the uh, to the 1845 Walnut Street garage. And following the construction of that garage. In 1954, at 10th and Ludlow Streets, the PPA opened the first self-park garage. Now, this was a real, real trendsetter at the time because at the time, well, prior to that, parking garages effectively operated as a kind of like a glorified valet service. The private parking operators were very, very hesitant to permit patrons to drive into their facility and park the vehicles themselves because of liability concerns. But this changed that trend. It showed that people can, are able to park the car, park their vehicles themselves in private in, in garages and able to go about uh, their business in the city. And, you know, I don't, I, I don't want to completely hijack all the history here. I, I, I could go on and on. I think I should probably turn it over to Janelle here a little bit who who has uh, the same amount of knowledge that I do. But Janelle, if I can, I, I just, I think we may have a question in here or two. Sure, if we wanna take a quick break real quick to address the questions that they have, and then I'll get back to the slide. I am seeing that one attendee had, uh, had audio issues earlier. Uh, Kelly, if you could let us know if you're still having those issues, we'll try to address them. But uh, for now, we'll just let uh, Janelle move forward. We good? Has Kelly said anything back yet? Good for now. Okay, cool. And if not, if we can't get, you know, if you cannot hear right now, if you're having audio issues, you can always tune in or later on, later tomorrow, or come early Monday. This recording. This recording on our YouTube channel. So if you missed out anything or any information tonight, no worries. You can always catch up with the recorded um, version of the, the PowerPoint. So like Bill talked about, in the 50s, there was an influx of automobiles in the city and the city wanted to create, you know, more parking facilities for the influx of automobiles. So the city wanted to create an underground parking facility. However, we were forced um, incurred for this type of project, private garage operators did not want to sustain the cost of a ventilation system and structural costs to build underground. So the parking authority stepped in and started plans to build the first underground parking facility under Independence Mall. This garage was completed and opened in 1964 and it's still open to this day. It was the first underground parking garage in the city and in, I believe, in the nation. Um, so, like I said, it is currently still open and operating. So if you're in Old City or Fridays or Saturdays after 5 p.m., our Independence Auto Mall parking garage underground 
offers $8 flat rate parking. So just a little plug, if you're in the area, <laughs> on Fridays and Saturdays, that garage that is still open from 1964 is still there in existence. And they also have great deals for independent small and other things in Old City and in that area. So addressing the suburban mall problem. In the 1960s, malls and or areas of commerce were being built. You had King, I mean, yeah, King of Pressure was built in 63 and Cherry Hill Mall was being built in 1961. So to bring commerce to the city, there were malls being built downtown. So aid to, to aid to the commerce in Center City and downtown, PPA opened two garages with direct access to these commerce or to these fashion shopping districts. The first was open on 8th and Philbert Garage um, with direct access to Strawbridge and, Clo Strawbridge and Clothier stores and also the Lip Brothers building, which we currently reside in today as the PPA headquarters. So if you ever had to come down to PPA, the building or connecting our garage at 8th and Philbert is also our building that we exist in today. So um, the second garage was built in, well, 11 years later in, uh, was it 64? or 75, the Gallery Mall Garage was built to create, um, you know, to drive commerce downtown and to create convenient parking for people coming to shop downtown. So if you guys take a look at the screen, these were the rates to the left of what the, the parking rates were in these times. So this is like a, I wanna say this is from like the 1960s of one of our parking garages, the list. So if you could look, the picture is a little faint, but it says for zero to one hour, it was 15 cents for parking. So I know things, we always complain about the prices of things today, but if you think about it, 15 cents for one hour was pretty good. The airport operation. So in 1974, the PPA joined its first lease agreement with the city to open and create parking garage or parking facilities on site at the Philadelphia International Airport. This was supporting, this is in to support airport operations and also encourage economic viability for the airport and the entire region. So currently now we are still operating seven garages at the Philadelphia International Airport with 11,823 spaces. Now I'll pick it up back here a little bit. Now folks, remember back in uh, earlier slides, the mention that the um, state legislature passed the Philadelphia Parking, I'm sorry, the Parking Authority Law in 1947. Now what the state legislature then did in 1982 is they amended that law to permit Philadelphia and Philadelphia alone to delegate more powers to their respective parking authority to, in order to create a more efficient and coordinated system to regulate not only off-street parking operations, but on-street parking operations. <clears throat> so that law was then amended at the state level and then it then required city council to pass an ordinance to delegate those powers. And this occurred on April 22nd, 1983, bill number 1633 of city council. Mayor Green then signed an ordinance expanding the role and functions of the Philadelphia Parking Authority in order to have a more cohesive system to better regulate Philadelphia's Philadelphia's parking in general. And, you know, Janelle, uh, prior to those uh, responsibilities being delegated to the Philadelphia Parking Authority, there were quite a few agencies involved in the entire parking apparatus of Philadelphia. Right. It appears on our screen, the agencies involved were these four agencies here that you see, um, and they all had parts in issuing and regulating the parking laws in the city. So it was the Philadelphia Streets Department, the Philadelphia Police Department, the Department of Licensing and Inspection, and the Department of Revenue. So all of these all of these agencies had actual parts in dealing with issuing tickets, putting up signs, enforcing regulations, 
all of the things that now have been expand, expanded as part of the PPA responsibility. So we're gonna go through the different responsibilities that these agencies had that were transferred to the parking authority. So for the streets department, they were in control prior to 1983, they were in control or had powers over meter installation and maintenance, parking sign installation and establishing parking regulations. But now that these roles have expanded, this is now under the purview of the Philadelphia Parking Authority. As to meter revenue, so where this was a part, you know, with the, the installation of meters came from the streets department and the Department of Revenue collected the funds. Now the PPA was made responsible for collecting meter revenue. So license and inspection had the authority to issue loading zone permits and also residential parking permits. So these two programs are to encourage and to aid um, customers and residents of Philadelphia in parking. So if you have a business, you were able to apply for a loading zone, either near or in front of your place of your, you know, your establishment, that way it'd help customers, if you, uh, help customers with convenient parking near your business. Um, the residential parking program was created for Philadelphia residents to have parking in or near their neighborhoods in first it started in commercial districts. So when the Department of License and Inspection had this power, it was only in a small area in the city. When the responsibility was given to the Philadelphia Parking Authority, we noticed or the, the city noticed more of a need for these types of regulations in their area. And now the program is expanded throughout the entire city of Philadelphia. Now, here we have the Philadelphia Police Department. Now, they still currently are able to issue tickets. However, the Philadelphia Parking Authority in 1983 was put in responsibility of not only issuing, but processing these parking tickets that were issued. So the Philadelphia Police Department now may issue these parking tickets, but the Philadelphia Parking Authority is responsible for processing these parking tickets. And also we were made responsible for towing and impounding vehicles. Vehicle immobilization, or people more commonly referred to as booting, was also established in 1983. This was established by the city to encourage compliance of repeat unpaid offenders for ticket violations and the like. So this was not a part of any, any other agency prior to the Philadelphia Parking Authority, but however, when rules or roles were expanded and duties were given to us, this was one of the programs that the city figured hey, they, the Philadelphia Parking Authority, they can have part in to encourage compliance. Thanks, Janelle. And, uh, you know, it, we're the Philadelphia Parking Authority. Uh, admittedly, it's not a great experience to be issued a parking violation. So we would be, uh, well, also we want to let it be known that if you feel you've ever been issued a violation that you feel is issued an error or not correct you do have a right to uh, dispute that ticket and we fully uh, support your right to do so at the same time uh, the philadelphia parking authority uh, has no role in the adjudication or dispute process this is handled by a separate entity uh, but we want to at least touch on the history of parking ticket disputes for the purposes of this presentation um, back in uh March 22nd, 1989, Bill number 350 of City Council, it, it, it was an ordinance that transferred responsibility of administering parking ticket disputes from Philadelphia Traffic Court to the city's Bureau of Administrative Adjudication, which is still the entity that administers parking ticket disputes at this time. So if you are disputing a parking ticket, that is the entity that you are doing it with. And as I had mentioned, their responsibility to the Bureau of Administrative Adjudication was transferred in 1989 from traffic court to the BAA, which is the acronym for Bureau of Administrative Adjudication. We, we just, since we're going through legislations in this presentation in a chronological order, we would kind of be remiss in not making mention of that. And speaking of further legislation, 
in 2001, the PPA then did transfer from, uh, did transition from a, a city agency to a state governed agency. The PA Gem General Assembly passed Act 22 of 2001, which mandated that the, uh, that the PPA board be governed by a six member board appointed by the governor. Now, when that had passed at the state level, the direct oversight of the PPA fell under the PA House of Urban Affairs Committee, as well as the PA Senate Consumer Affairs Committee. Now, our board in our current state, they are currently pictured up on the screen right now. We have Chairwoman Beth Grossman, Alfred Tollenberger, who is our vice chairman, Mark Niscatra, Pat Furlong, Lynette brown So, and Obra Kernertel. Now they are the six uh, member board of the Philadelphia Parking Authority and they are appointed to 10 year terms. So this transition to a state agency occurred back in 2001. And then if you go all the way to 2005, about four years later, the state general assembly then established the automated red light camera enforcement program initially as a pilot but since then it has greatly greatly expanded to many locations throughout the city it initially started at the highest crash rate intersections on roosevelt boulevard and it has yielded very 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 positive results and uh, similar to what we did earlier in the presentation we just want to show you a brief video on the overall goal of the automated red light camera enforcement program. So if you can bear with us for one second, we're gonna get that video up on the screen for you. By implementing an automated red light enforcement program, safety on Philadelphia's city streets has been improved. Well, the automated red light enforcement program has been a huge success, in my opinion, here in Philadelphia. We started in June of 2005. Since that period of time, approximately a million citations have been issued as a result of the program, but it's not about the tickets. It's about safety. And we have seen a decrease in the number of traffic accidents at many of our intersections that have been the most problematic. When a vehicle runs a red light, digital images are captured showing the violation with the date, time, and location of the offense. The images are transmitted to the Philadelphia Parking Authority for initial verification and carefully reviewed to ensure a violation occurred. Then the image is sent to the Philadelphia Police Department for final review before a notice of violation is sent to the vehicle owner. The automated red light enforcement program utilizes advanced technology as part of a comprehensive and cooperative effort by the Philadelphia Police and Parking Authority to enhance safety measures on our streets. Traffic enforcement is all part of the larger picture of public safety. When people look at police, they tend to think of us in terms of just dealing with some of the street crime, but the reality is that more people really get harmed through traffic accidents than they do through any other kind of behavior that takes place on the street. So it's important that we have solid enforcement activity using technology, leveraging technology like we do with the automated red light enforcement program is a huge asset to us and it does lower the number of people being injured or even killed as a result of traffic accidents. Uh, we see this as a safety feature for the city of Philadelphia and we believe by using this option that it does help reduce the risk on our streets. Learn more about the Philadelphia Parking Authority's red light program by calling toll free 844-248-0449 or visit www.philopark.org. All right, Janelle, do you mind confirming if you can see the, we're good? Okay, we're getting it down to a science. No hiccups. I'm good. Good okay. now. <laughs> <laughs> 
So as you saw in, in the video, folks, the, the overall goal of the automated red light camera was and still is to decrease red light running at the city's most uh, high crash rate intersections, and it has yielded very, very positive results. If you'd like to look into it further, you can go to our website at www.philipark.org. So that that had occurred in 2005, the uh, implementation of the red light uh, automated red light camera program. But what had also occurred around the somewhat around the same time is that the state legislature also mandated that the Philadelphia Parking Authority be the regulatory authority of taxis and limousines operating within Philadelphia. That occurred in 2004, but further down the line, all the way up to 2017, when TNC transportation network companies, more commonly referred to as Uber and Lyft, were coming into Philadelphia, the state legislature also mandated in 2017 that we be the regulatory authority for Uber and Lyft as well. So if you are ever um, enlisting the services of a for hire transportation service, such as Uber, Lyft, a taxi, or limousine within Philadelphia, the PPA is the, the entity that regulates them. So with that being said, if you ever have any issues, if you encounter an issue with any ride that you have in Philadelphia, you reach out to us. And I got to tell you, after working with our taxi and limousine division for uh, close to eight years now, they they are they they are always on top of uh, complaints and lost and found requests like a lampshade. It's actually really, really invigorating to be part of. But moving forward, okay, uh, we would be remiss if we didn't at least make mention of this. Yes, uh, between 2008 and 2012, we were featured on Parking Wars on several, several occasions. Uh, Janelle and I, actually, from time to time, we uh, uh, we get autograph requests for, uh, in particular, uh, Shelley and Garfield, uh, who are no longer uh, working at the Parking Authority. But yes, we would be remiss in not at least acknowledging that, yes, this did happen. We were on the show Parking Wars between 2008 and 2012. Now, if we move more recently, also an act of the state legislature mandated that the Philadelphia Parking Authority implement a pilot program for automated speed enforcement at, at the dangerous intersections along Roosevelt Boulevard. Now, as you can see on the graphic up there, it has yielded very, very, very positive results thus far. And I think we may have a question here and we'll get to it in a second, uh, but since the implementation of the program, we actually just uh, released this year's automated speed enforcement camera report. Since its inception, speeding has decreased, well, violations have decreased, the issuance of violations have decreased by 91% at locations in which these cameras are installed. And that is the overall goal of the program is to reduce driving and ex at excess speeds. Now, Janelle, I think we did have a question here. Let me just pop in here. For some reason, my capabilities are not allowing me to see those. I apologize. Pardon me. But hey, we got the video uh, and slideshow uh, slide transitions down though, right? But that, that one's on me. Nope, that was just another pop-up that came up on my screen. We are, but similar to the red light camera video, folks, we're going to show you a brief video on the overall goal and operations of our automated speed enforcement camera program. <clears throat> Life in Philly may be fast, but that doesn't mean it's okay to speed. Approximately 53% of Philadelphia's traffic-related deaths are the result of aggressive drivers who speed or fail to properly yield. 
To help reduce the number of speeding-related injuries, collisions, and fatalities, the Philadelphia Parking Authority has joined the City of Philadelphia as part of their Vision Zero campaign to make Roosevelt Boulevard safer. Partnering with Vera Mobility, the Philadelphia Parking Authority placed speed safety cameras along eight dangerous stretches of highway on Roosevelt Boulevard. If a vehicle is detected traveling in excess of 11 miles per hour over the posted speed limit, the cameras capture images of the license plate along with a short video of the event. Vehicles traveling 11 to 19 miles per hour over the posted limit will receive a $100 penalty. Vehicles traveling 20 to 29 miles per hour over the posted limit will receive a $125 penalty. And vehicles traveling 30 miles per hour or more over the posted limit will receive a penalty of $150. Help us make Roosevelt Boulevard safer. Slow down, take your time, and drive safely, Philadelphia. All right, Janelle, last time I'm going to ask you, we're all good? All right. We're good. So moving forward, the video that we watched earlier described our mission. However, our mission still remains the same. The Philadelphia Parking Authority is here to help improve the quality of life for Philadelphia residents and visitors. So I'm just going to go through like, kind of like a recap or keep you up to date of what's going on today at the Philadelphia Parking Authority. So from the inception of the parking meter in 1940, currently today we have six, well, 1,650 pay-by-play kiosks and 15,182 metered parking spaces in and around the city. There's over, well, we have a mobile payment app called Meter Up, and there's been over a million downloads of this application since, I want to say, maybe since inception date of the Meter Up. And December also, 2017, yep. Since 2017, there's been 100 or 1 million, I'm sorry, meter up downloads of the app for residents and visitors of the city of Philadelphia. And there's also 37 residential parking districts. So like I said on the, this prior slide, the beginning of the residential parking or permanent parking program, there was only a small neighborhood in Center City that had the RPP program. Now we've expanded the 37 districts. Our off street operations or commonly known as parking garages and lots. We operate over 40 community lots around the city of Philadelphia. And we also have six center city conveniently placed parking garages in the city. So you have the parking on 8th, auto park like the fashion district. And most of these, these parking garages we've talked about from the beginning or in the beginning of this presentation. And we're just bringing you back to present day times. So there's the, the auto district, I mean, I'm sorry, the fashion district, the auto park on 8th, independent small, old city garage, family court, and I can't see at the bottom of the screen, but I know that we have another. <laughs> gateway parking garage. Gateway parking garage. So, the yeah. cheapest garage in the city, 15th and Vine. And if you're ever looking for parking deals, you can always go to our website and check out our garage page, which has, you know, our garage and lots page. It's also listed of the parking garages that we have in Center City and also our neighborhood lots. So, sorry. <laughs> At the airport, we currently operate seven on-site parking garages. So if you ever travel to the Philadelphia airport, or traveling to and from in the city of Philadelphia, if you park at a garage at the airport on site, then it's one of the Philadelphia Parking Authority garages. And we also have limited availability in the economy lot for parking. Now, like Bill was just talking about, initially it was just taxi cabs and limousines. However, with the market expanding, we also enforce or regulate Uber and Lyft drivers and vehicles. So we have for higher transportation over 460 taxi taxi cabs and limousines that we regulate throughout the city. And so I just want to clarify something here real, real quick if I can. The uh, the PPA issues medallions to taxi uh, to taxi cabs and limos on any given day 460 cabs and limousines are are is the average amount that is operating on the street on a given day. But there are, we have issued over 1,600 medallions, so that means over 1,600 individuals are uh, able to operate taxi cabs and limos throughout the city. So I just wanted to clar 
clarify that point there. I'm, I apologize for interrupting, Janelle. No, no problem. And the medallions are, if anybody has any questions, the medallions are just to make sure that the, the taxi cabs are, the drivers are registered, they have licenses, the cabs are clean, and they're up to par, you know, with regulations for travel. So if you ever get in a cab that's not clean, um, or you have problems with the driver, maybe it was ride discrimination, you can always reach out to us because our taxi limousine um, officers will definitely get on the case and handle that. And I just want to make mention while we're on this slide, it is very important if you do travel in taxi cabs or limos or Uber and Lyft around the city that you get a P number. Well, it's only on cabs, but if you, if you um, utilize cabs in the city, if there's ever an issue with your ride, every cab in the city of Philadelphia is a given a P number. And that P number is on the cab, on the back of the cab, on the side, and it's also in the back of the vehicle. So if you are a rider, maybe you didn't see it before you got in, but you can also, you know, while you're in the cab, you can also jot that P number down. So if anything was to happen, they have a reference on which cab you were in for that day. So like our, like Bill was just talking about, we showed the videos for our automated speed and red light enforcement. These programs are, the red light and both the speed camera started as pilot programs and they are, well, they, they both started on Roosevelt Boulevard because of the high crash data from, that yields from Roosevelt Boulevard. Now, currently we have 32 intersections with red light camera enforcement and we have eight intersections on the boulevard with speed camera enforcement. So we moved the pilot program started for red light on the boulevard. However, the city noticed the need for more enforcement. So we expanded and now we're in throughout the city of Philadelphia. And just one final little recap here before we end the presentation for, uh, for tonight. Uh, Janelle, you just went over a lot of things. So just one little final recap. How it started 1947 when the Philadelphia Parking Authority, when the Parking Authority law was established, and in 1950 when the PPA was officially established, we only oversaw off street parking garage operations. But now, go to 2022, that, uh, that list has uh, kind of grown to a plethora of responsibilities. So, as you can see, folks, that as uh, the transportation ecosystem, in Philadelphia evolved, so did the need to properly regulate uh, not only uh, the parking operations, but other public safety aspects, such as driving at excessive speeds and driving through uh, uh, red lights. So uh, as you can see, our history is rather vast and our responsibilities and roles have uh, really, really expanded throughout time and have kind of evolved with the <clears throat> changing needs of the time. So we thought this was just you know, something that we wanted people to know, thought they would find interesting. And I mean, you know, uh, as we saw earlier, I think people did at least learn one thing and that was uh, parking meters uh, first cropped up in Oklahoma City in 1935. So. Hopefully you all found this presentation informative, interesting, have a uh, better understanding of our, our overall history and our mission in its current state. However, if you have any questions concerning the PPA, or if you just wanna chat more, you can reach out to myself and Janelle directly at engagepPPA at philippark.org, or you can reach out to us on social media at Philip Parking throughout all social media channels, Monday through Friday, 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. We'd also like to take this time to formally invite you to our next virtual town hall meeting, which will occur on Thursday, March 3rd at 6 p.m. We always have a... Oh, did I say March? We passed that. I'm going back. I hopped in the DeLorean. I'm sorry, okay. Thursday, March 3rd. <laughs> I was doing so good until the very end. I literally messed up the last line. It's fine. <laughs> anyway, we really hope to see you guys Thursday, May 3rd, 2022 at 6 p.m. And don't forget folks, please take the time to fill out the survey, which will be immediately following this presentation. Uh, would also be remiss in 
<coughs> excuse me, and uh, not welcoming back Miss Ann King. It's always good to see you uh, joining us uh, on these uh, monthly virtual town hall meetings. And also, uh, Kelly, uh, thank you for joining us. It's always good to have a fellow transportation partner within the city of Philadelphia participating in these events. So until May 3rd, not March 3rd, May 3rd at 6 p.m., uh, we hope everyone is off to a good start to their spring, enjoying the nice weather that is coming towards us. And we will see you next time. I was going to say, like I said earlier, and I'm sorry, if you mm -hmm. if you missed anything on tonight's presentation, this video will be uploaded to our YouTube channel. So that way you can always go back and, you know, get like a, a history refresher course on the PPA and what we do and why we do it. So if you would like to, you can always check out our YouTube channel also for previous town hall videos and recordings. And uh, Ms. Black, I uh, just saw that you had a question regarding the street cleaning legislation. Uh, we, uh, like I said, unfortunately, we are out of time here uh, tonight, but we do have your contact information and we will follow up with you in the coming days. If not tomorrow, definitely Monday, but really appreciate the question. Kelly, thank you uh, for joining us. Like I said earlier, always great to have a fellow transportation partner uh, joining us here tonight. Hope everything is going well for you over at Otis. So until next month, folks, uh, thank you for joining us and we will see you next month. Have a good night, everyone.